first off, let me let me thank you, uh, Joe and Consortium News, for doing this. I wish it's more Unity for Jay as well at organizer. Just want to interrupt. Susie Dawson's Unity for Jay. I've just taken it over recently, but thank you. I know anyway. Susie. Susie's done fantastic work in this and deserve. I've thanked her before, but uh, I just on on the air. I wanted to say thank you to Consortium News. This is what media should be doing about the persecution of Julian Assange. Uh, it's amazing that an uh, outlet like The Guardian that profited from WikiLeaks releases uh, is now helping to persecute Julian Assange uh, rather than standing up for his defense. Uh, I've been a political activist since law school. I graduated from George Washington in 1980. I practiced law briefly in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, I've been involved from the beginning, really, since 1980 in fighting for uh, justice. I uh, started with the end of the drug war. And I got involved in the issue of WikiLeaks in this century, when, almost when they started publishing, uh, because I was working on anti-war work and their releases on the Iraq war, on the Afghanistan war, on Guantanamo, on the State Department cables, were all so relevant to our work to try to get the truth out, because every political movement begins with education, begins with getting the truth out. And we get so many lies from our mass media that we need an antidote. And uh, WikiLeaks provides that antidote. Uh, I got involved uh, with the Chelsea Manning case, uh, became a member of their steering committee uh, for the Chelsea Manning Support Network early on and have followed that case, followed that case through and organized lots of events and protests. Uh, got people helping to get people out the courtroom to monitor that trial. Uh, and you know, the more you saw in that case, the more important WikiLeaks became as well. I'm also on the advisory board of the Courage Foundation, which was set up by WikiLeaks to uh, you know, protect whistleblowers, including Julian Assange. My sense of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks is this is a breakthrough media effort. It really democratizes the media in ways that are urgently needed. Rather than a corporate media outlet controlled by its advertisers, its board members, which are also often from corporations, its investors, often from big corporations, and it, with close ties to the government, and sometimes kowtowing to the government on what they will talk about and publish, WikiLeaks is the opposite. It's democratized. It gives people in government, uh, people in corporations, uh, the tools to expose the truth. And that is very frightening. That's such a loss of control uh, for the uh, government over the media to actually have people able to leak the truth anonymously from the Pentagon, uh, from NSA, from the CIA, from uh, the National Endowment for Democracy, uh, and from big corporations uh, is just like an astounding, transformative process that it immediately scared uh, the power structure. And particularly when the materials leaked by Chelsea Manning exposed the day-to-day -day workings of the Iraq war, raw material, raw intelligence material, showing what was happening on a daily basis, videos showing uh, that were taken by people uh, in the military, showing what they were doing. Uh, wow, that is a mind blower. And I have, I have no doubt that when the history of this century is written, uh, historians will go back through those WikiLeaks uh, releases and will develop a history about the reality of these never-ending wars, this mass intelligence gathering, this corporate control of U.S. foreign policy, and put together amazingly honest histories about what we're living through now and what so many people don't really know as going on. So I see the persecution of uh, Julian Assange uh, as uh, defining the First Amendment for now and the future. And uh, if, if he is prosecuted, I hope he is not prosecuted, that case will be equivalent of the John Peter Zenger case. The Zenger case helped to create the First Amendment. Uh, and I suspect that 
if Julian is prosecuted, no matter how it turns out, that will help to define free speech for the remainder of this century and beyond. It will be a breakthrough moment in what we, it will show us we need stronger free speech, uh, free uh, pr pr protections of the media uh, than we currently have because a case like Assange's case should not be even happening. He should not be having to hide in an embassy in London and being threatened and being blocked from communicating with people. Uh, and so, I, again, I think what Consortium News is doing, what these, what these vigils are doing are so important uh, because it sets the table uh, for where we're going to have to go with this Assange case. And people should know that it's going to take a movement to protect Julian Assange. It's not going to happen without people power standing up for him because the power structure is opposed to him. And that's why there's been such an effort at character assassination uh, to make Julian Assange someone you're not allowed to like, uh, to make him into a sex, a sex abuser, make him into a, a Trump fan. Uh, all this character assassination has been intentionally done to prevent a moving movement from growing uh, to support who I think is the most important uh, journalist of the 21st century because he's broken through and democratized the media. I'll stop there. Well, I, I don't think there's any hyperbole in what you've said in pointing out that this is truly an historic press freedom case. That is right up there with John Peter Zenger, which was in colonial America. That's right. The British, British governor of New York prosecuted him for writing something that he didn't like about himself. And the, ju the jury nullified the case. They, they recognized that the law at the time allowed the governor general to prosecute a printer, in that case, of printing some something against the government, but they said they didn't agree with the law. And that was the foundation later for our press freedoms. And now maybe we've come full circle in the Julian Assange case. He would be probably the first, would be the first major case that we know of anyway, of a journalist being prosecuted in North America since John Peter Zenger. That was 300 years ago. Um, that's right. And, Z and that's Zenger's, defense, Zenger, Zenger's defense was he published the truth. Yep. And that, that's that, was right. actually, and that was not even allowed as a defense in those days. Correct. If you were saying something bad about the government, about the king, didn't you matter. were guilty. It didn't right. matter. And so that just it was, a, and that's a, kind of what Bob Barr just said, you know, in his testimony. If it's not good for the government, we're going to prosecute him. Well, that's exactly what the Zenger case was about. So it's a reversal of 300 years of press freedom. One uh, of the freedom. reasons for the revolution is exactly. to reverse it. Reversing exactly. it. Going back to colonial British. Uh, thinking, government thinking. Now, Zenger was lucky to be able to get a jury that would nullify. That's a rarity. Uh, jury nullification is, you know, jurors are not instructed on their right to say the law is wrong. Uh, they're instructed to follow the facts as presented in court. And as we talked about, you talked about earlier with David, often the, the reason someone does something is not allowed in that evidence. But jury nullification is not common. And I can tell you, in Alexandria, Virginia, where this case would likely be prosecuted, the jury would be made up of people who work at the Pentagon, their spouses, their children, their friends, people who work for military contractors, work for intelligence agencies, their spouses and children and friends. This will not be a jury that's likely to nullify. And so it, it, that, that Alexandria court is used for these kinds of cases for a reason because it almost guarantees a conviction. There's no way that Assange would get a fair trial uh, in Alexandria, Virginia, in that Fourth Circuit uh, in Virginia. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you talked about the media. Why uh, is the corporate media opposed to him so strongly now when, A, they did profit by getting scoops from him? It, it helped their profits in terms of money as well. And as uh, Ray McGovern, who we're going to talk to in a minute, uh, wrote from uh, our publication, about a speech that the number two general counsel of the New York Times gave out to some judges on the West Coast a couple of months ago, in which he said, we don't like Assange or we don't want him prosecuted because if they go after him, they can go after us because we're doing the same thing he does, which is to publish classified information. I'll and tell you why, why they don't like I'll, I'll tell you why they don't like him. There's a fight going on right now in the media between the corporate media, which is losing credibility, People don't trust it. The polls show it's just not trusted. And the independent people's media. 
And that's growing in popularity. People trust their friends. They trust people like Ray McGovern and Bill Benny and others who, you know, are truth tellers, uh, but don't get covered in the media, the corporate media. And, and that battle between the corporate media and the people's media, Julian Assange is right in the center of that because he's empowering the people's media. He's empowering a democratized media. And the corporate media is threatened. Uh, the newspaper readership is down. Cable TV news media down. They're not being watched. They're not being believed. And something like WikiLeaks empowers people like us who, you know, our, our website, popularresistance.org, covers the movement, the people's movement on a variety of fronts that the media doesn't cover. And so someone like uh, Julian Assange empowers all of us, empowers consortium news, because they are, that is an avenue for democratized media, for people's media, and the commercial media is very afraid of that.